Welcome to theme 3.8 and I hope you're stoked to be here because today we're doing Stokes theorem. So previously we've done Green's theorem which relates a line integral of a vector function um, along a curve to the area that it is bounded, which it bounds. So what we needed for Green's theorem is the curve needed to be positively orientated and the partial derivatives of q to x and p to y needed to be continuous in the region of D. So what Stokes' theorem does is it relates the line integral of a curve to a surface of that is above the curve. So the surface has to have a positively orientated curve. And basically what it says is that the line integral of the flux is equal to the double integral of the curl of f ds. So it's basically the flux integral of the curl of this specific flux. So we're working with surfaces instead of areas in Green's theorem. So basically the line integral is not dependent on which surface you use. Let's say you have this curve and you want to find the line integral of the curve and the work that's being done along the curve. And Basically what you can see from this picture is you have this surface that is flat and then you have the surface here that let's say it's an upside down paraboloid for instance. That's your second surface. So it doesn't matter which surface you are basing the line integral of as long as the curve is positive. So this would just be the general equation that you would use. And then you have to choose the surface that is the easiest to parameterize. Because if you can remember from flux integrals, what we need is a parameterization and we need a gradient vector. So if you have a surface that's easier to parameterize, it's better. So for instance, in this case, it's easier to parameterize the circle than a paraboloid. Let's have an example. So in this example, they say find the line integral of the curve of intersection of z is equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared and x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So it's the curve of intersection of a paraboloid and a circle by using the appropriate theorem. So they always like to ask, use an appropriate theorem. They won't tell you which theorem to use. You would have to figure that out yourself. And then they give us that the normal vector is upwards. So to check whether your curve is positive, you can use the right hand rule if you want to say so. So if your, your normal vector is upwards, that means your curve will go anti-clockwise which means it is positive and they then give you your flux equation as well which will be used to calculate this line integral. So now we can sketch what this would look like. So this is basically it's just the intersection of the paraboloid and the circle. So what we do know is that the surface is an open surface and we know that the curve is positively orientated. So these are the two things that we are looking for. Therefore, we use Stokes' theorem. Okay, so what we can then do is we get our function in terms of x, y and z, which would be this. And then we get our gradient vector, which will be this. It is a positive one because we know that the normal vector is upwards. We then get the curl of the flux equation that's been given to us. So the curl is just the, the 
cross product between dou and your flux equation. So it would look like this. And then your co of f would look like this. So now we have our flux equation that we will be using. And we have our gradient vector. So now's the question we have to parameterize. So which surface do we use to parameterize this? Because maybe we want to change our gradient vector into terms of r and theta. How do we choose that? So my advice would be choose the easiest surface to parameterize. Our options are a paraboloid and a circle plane. So in this case, the circle would be easier to parameterize. It doesn't have a z value or anything. So our parameterization would then be x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sine theta. And the place where the paraboloid and the circle intersect is that z is equal to 3. You can prove this to yourself just by equating the two equations. So then we know that zero, r is between 0 and 1, and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So now we've parameterized it, and things are great. So we know for a flux integral, we have our flux equation dot producted with our gradient vector. But since we parameterized it in terms of r and theta, we have to change the x, y, and z values in terms of r and theta. So it's now 2r cos theta and 2r sin theta. And since we had to change this in terms of r and theta, we just add our r for the integrating factor. And then if you simplify that, this would be your flux integral that's equal to the line integral of this specific curve. If the surface is a closed surface, we can look at the two different curves that we can get. Let's say we slice a sphere open and it has an outward um, orientation. Then the top part would have a curve that is positive and the bottom part has a curve that is negative. So usually for Stokes' theorem to be applied, we need an open surface. And the reason for this is going to be proved now. So to use Stokes' theorem on the, we can use Stokes' theorem on the top part because the curve is positive and it is open, kind of, since it's split. So then this flux integral is equal to the line integral of curve 1. And that is equal to the negative of this line integral for curve 2. And that would be equal to the negative of the flux integral for the second surface. So now we know that the flux integral for surface 1 is the negative of the flux integral for surface 2. Therefore, if you have a closed surface, usually you would add two flux integrals if you have a closed surface for the flux integral analysis. But since this is just the negative of that, it's zero. So we can't use Stokes' theorem on closed surfaces because it would just end up being zero. And that is it for theme 3.8 theory. See you at the practice problems.